All right, if you're a British mixed martial arts fan, then right now, it's never been a better time. Of course, we've got great champions like Leon Edwards and Tom Aspinall is the interim champion. We've got people like Lerone Murphy, a man that's main eventing this weekend against the legendary Edson Barboza, right? Incredible fighters. It's never been a better time to be a British fan. But generally, the pay-per-views are on the other side of the world. Well, this time, it's coming back to Manchester for a title fight. Not one, but two title fights. Leon Edwards defending against Bilal Mohammed for the welterweight strap in a long-awaited matchup. Dana White just said some things on Instagram. Leon Edwards, Bilal Mohammed, main event. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And of course, Tom Aspinall defending the interim title against Curtis Blades, a former opponent and top to bottom. This main card is absolutely stacked. Now, before I get into previewing some of the fights, it's starting on California time. And I know a lot of people have been upset with that. I've had so many DMs. Look, listen, I feel you. I really do. I really do. But business is business. I'm not sure of all the contractual obligations, but there's reasons why this fight is going ahead at the regular time. And you know who's not going to be complaining? Tom Aspinall and Leon Edwards, because there's going to be more pay-per-views. It's the middle of summer. Okay, people are out and about. Listen, I know it sucks for British MMA fans, but you did it for me at UFC 204 when I defended the strap in Manchester against Dan Henderson. It was an unforgettable night. The atmosphere was absolutely electric. Yes, you're going to be exhausted on Sunday. You're going to be exhausted on Monday. Probably still even hung over a bit, judging by last time. Are you intoxicated? But it's an incredible card. So let's just celebrate that fact. Now, as I say, main event, Leon Edwards going up against Bilal Mohammed. Bilal Mohammed has been campaigning for this fight for a long time. And rightly so. Listen... Bilal Mohammed is just one of those guys. He's unrelenting. He comes forward. He's got that crazy pressure. Excellent wrestling. The striking's getting better all the time. We saw that against Sean Brady when he knocked him out in round two back in Abu Dhabi. And the man is riding a 10-fight win streak over some tremendous opponents. Gilbert Burns, Sean Brady, Vincente Luque, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Damian Meyer, Leon Edwards. Remember, these guys fought before. This is a rematch. In fact, both the main event and the co-main event they're both rematches. First time, Leon and Bilal, it was an eye poke, and that went down in round two. It was a nasty eye poke, but nobody did it on purpose. It was a complete accident, but the reality is, at that point, Leon Edwards was cruising to a victory. So what is Bilal going to do different this time? And outside of that fight with Bilal, he's made a habit of beating these wrestlers, took the title of Kamara Usman, at the time, the pound for pound, number one on the planet, head shot dead. Kamara showed up for the rematch, didn't underestimate him, came to England, did it in his own backyard and was confident that he was going to take that strap back. Could he get it done? No, he couldn't. Leon Edwards was absolutely fantastic that night. The knees and elbows in the clinch, the takedown defense was absolutely perfect. And then he follows that up with another victory over Colby Covington, a man with a very similar style, again, to Bilal Mohammed. So right now, Leon Edwards has kind of perfected the craft, mastered the craft about stopping takedowns, keeping the fight on the feet, and fighting his fight, okay? So the pressure is on Bilal Mohammed. I know recently he's been training with the likes of Habib Namagamedov. He goes over to Dagestan sometimes, and he's improving all the time. As I said against Sean Brady, the strike was absolutely fantastic, but I'm telling you, Leon's going to be a massive favorite in this one. So, co-main event, good mate of mine, Tom Aspinall, the interim champion. Yes, I know a lot of you think this is weird, that Tom's defending the interim title. And look, listen, it is what it is, okay? Stipe versus John Jones is going to go down probably Madison Square Garden later this year in November. Whoever wins this fight between Curtis and Tom will get the winner between Jones and Stipe, right? We just got to forget about that. But this fight's very interesting because let's remember the fought before. It didn't even start. It was a win for Curtis Blades, but Tom blew his leg out, blew his knee out, had surgery about a year and a half away from the sport. It was absolutely devastating, but it gave him a newfound hunger. He realized what he had and how much he loved this game. And Tom came back a better, much more improved, focused, determined individual than what he was previously. I'm telling you, Tom Aspinall is not a man to trifle with, but neither is Curtis Blaze. Look at that last win over Jael Tan Almeida, a man that just takes down everybody. Yeah, he took down Curtis once or twice, but Curtis Blaze landed those nice elbows up against the fence. He's got heavy, heavy hands as well and he's a gigantic heavyweight. This is a competitive fight. And as I say, the winner of that one goes on to fight Jones or Stipe. 
probably John Jones, if I'm honest. No disrespect to Stipe. Hey, but what do I know? Right, Paddy Pimbler, right? He's been around the UFC for a while now. He's had a good few fights. Now it's time to step up in competition and take on some of the top guys, okay? Bobby Green isn't one of the top guys, but Bobby Green has got a long, long resume. He's been around the UFC for a long time and he has got a mean streak. He's got fast hands, ridiculous boxing skill oozes confidence and bravado, will shit talk his opponents whilst it's going on. And Paddy Pimblett will do the exact same thing. So number one, the press conference, that's going to be a can't miss, right? These two are going to talk shit all the way leading through it. In fact, I've got an exclusive interview with Bobby Green coming up soon, so stay tuned for that one. Paddy's going to have to look to take this one down. I'm not saying he can't do it with the hands, but on paper, on paper... Bobby is faster, okay? But this is a mixed martial arts contest with the threat of the takedown and all the rest of it. It opens up the striking. But I think Bobby on the feet is better. I think Paddy on the ground is better. It's not a striker versus grappler type of matchup, but it's certainly a step up. It's a real fight for Paddy Pimblett. And if he can get through Bobby Green, hey, listen, massive, massive opportunities await Paddy Pimblett. Before that, Arnold Allen, Giga Chikadze. Arnold Allen, what a guy this is, right? What a win streak he was on. Unbelievable fighter. Yes, he's lost his last two. But who did he lose to? Movsar Ivlowev, a man that's 18-0. A man that nobody wanted to face. And Arnold Allen stepped in there with him after just fighting Max Holloway in a main event. Yeah, again, he didn't beat Max Holloway. Max Holloway is the bell of the ball at the moment. Look at that fight, that performance, that win, that knockout, the pointing at the ground against Justin Gagey at UFC 300, right? He's one of the biggest stars in all the mixed martial arts right now. And outside of Alexander Volkanovsky, he's pretty much been able to beat everybody. Arnold Allen went up against Max, did himself proud, did very, very well. We'll have definitely learned some lessons and then, of course, went up against Movsar Ivlowev and again, came up short against an undefeated 18-0 wrecking ball of technique and wrestling. And then opening up the main card, I said this on my YouTube short, if you saw it yesterday, this has got to be a number one contender matchup at Flyway. Coming from Dagestan, it's absolutely no surprise, is it, that Mohamed Makaev uses the wrestling, okay? And he's bloody good at it, but he's got great submissions, excellent takedown defense, and this man is disciplined. He's been a champion in the IMAF, the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation, for many, many years. He's traveled all over the world wrestling, and he's got his sights firmly on becoming a champion. And I'm telling you, if he gets through Manel Cop. He might be the next guy. But Manel Kopp ain't no walk in the park for anybody. This man can get it done everywhere. Beautiful striking. 11 knockouts. Five submissions. He's fought some really, really good competition. And he's a nasty little bastard as well. I'm telling you, I sat down with him on my podcast. This is a born fighter. He really is. Remember, at the press conference, I think, think it was UFC 298 or whatever it was. Seven, who cares? He's going head-to-head -head with Israel Adesanya. Sit the f*** down. Sit the f*** down, you. you little crack ass. He wanted to fight Izzy, a middleweight, a man that was the champion, a man that was dominating the world. But he's a flyweight. He's 125 pounds, but he doesn't give a shit. They always say it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Manel Cobb has got a proper dog inside him. So there's the main card. That is fantastic. It's worth staying up for. I'm not here just to find the start times. That has nothing to do with me, okay? The fact is, is that coming to Manchester is a phenomenal fight card with the best British talent on display. Two champions will be going out there that night, defending their spot, defending their straps, cementing their glory and their legendary status in the best sport on planet Earth. And you know what the best bit is? I'll be there as well. I'll be calling the fights. I cannot wait for this one. See you all there. Let me know who you think wins these fights in the comment section, and I'll see you soon. Got to get out for dinner. I'm in Costa Rica. I'm on holiday and uh, I'm keeping the missus waiting. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.